Good morning, world, wherever you are. Good morning, leaders. Good morning, people who want to be. You are leaders. It's Graham Moore, and I'm always pleased to be with you wherever you are in the world. I'm always really pleased to have my, have my two colleagues, two wise men, Phoebe Francis and uh, Muhammad Shukri. Good morning, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, and hi, everyone. Phoebe, Graham, and everybody who's watching. Good morning, everyone. Greetings to all. Uh, thank you, Graham, and thank you, Homer. Nice to be in, in your company. Mm -hmm. So let's, of course, always great to be together with you guys. Let's excite the, the juices in terms of our, our passion about leadership today. So, Muhammad, you tell me what you and everybody listening, what you would like us to talk about today. Uh, that's uh, kind of you. And um, the beginnings are always um, difficult, all right? Even when we start any conversation through this podcast, you know, the kickoff of anything, the uh, launching of anything, the start of any relationship always poses a specific challenge. Now we are the leadership challenge uh, trainers, master trainers, and um, the, what we should address a specific challenge that the leaders go through before they go on a smooth autopilot uh, flight they have to take off, and that take off with their team, whether the team is new, they are new to their team, or they were in the team before, now they are the leader. And now there's a new relationship between that leader and the crew he is going to lead, or he or she is going to lead. So uh, I would like if we can address that specific, the challenge that the captain goes through. Okay, really good. Really good, because there are times when we have a new leader, aren't there? Mm -hmm. we, we, we're not always going to be having the same leader. It's not the way it works. So we'll have a new leader. And that new leader may well be new to that environment uh, where those people are or that organisation. He or she may well be new to that level of leadership, right? Mm. So I'm going to pose a question which we pose in all of our workshops. And this is the question that we've surveyed and got responses to. We want the three most frequent answers to this question. Hi, I'm your new leader. As this gentleman or lady walks into the room. Hi there, I'm your new leader. Oh my gosh, I don't like the tie he's wearing. Oh my gosh, he's got long hair. No. So what sort of, what's the reaction likely to be? And what do you think the three main questions are that people want? to ask their new leader. And then we'll talk about how the new leader will handle the situation that he or she is in as a new leader. So, I am your new leader. Okay, Phoebe, we have a new leader in the room and we don't know him. What do we know we want to know uh, from him, out of him, about him? Yeah, I, I, thank you. First question I, I think uh, maybe coming in my mind is, who are you? <laughs> and, and he is Graham Moore. Do, the name is yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do I know him? Now we will be observing the body language for that person, how he is as, as Graham mentioned, how he's coming or <laughs> she is coming, what, what, what way the person is interacting with the, the group. So I think it is the curiosity to know who the person is. Uh, in, yep. in general, that is the first question coming to my mind. Yeah. It's really interesting, Phoebe, that uh, you said body language. And studies said that say that people judge and um, make an opinion about a person before he utters his first words. So sight comes before uh, sound. So uh, that also is something. So it's very good, important for the leader to allow that to happen actually and let them absorb and not try to immediately uh, uh, verbalize who he is. Let, 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 let everything take place. Yep. Graham. So what, what, uh, the question, first question is, who are you? Right? That's what Phoebe was saying, yes. Who are you? Oh, my name's Graham Moore. Um, and what it's so, <laughs> they all would have known that perhaps. So what other questions are the most frequently asked? 
with new leaders in the surveys that have been done by Leadership Challenge. Yeah, the other question which I think, Graham, is like how the person is going to lead us or take us where and where are where and to which direction the person is going to take us as a team, as an organization. So that yeah. is another so, question coming in. Well, I think there are two that you almost got into that. The one is why should why should we follow you, right? Why should we follow you? And the yeah. other one is really importantly, where are you taking us? Where are you taking us? Because people want to know, even if they, they don't get the answer right on the first day, they, they want to know this leader is with us. Why should we why should we follow him? And where is he or she taking us? Does that sound fair enough? Now, of course, there'll be other things that people will want to know, but these are the most important questions. So let's t- turn it around a little bit and ask the question from the other side, and that is, what would the new leader, how would they, they be feeling, Muhammad? I think uh, the leader um, is under most, more stress than they are when it comes to the beginnings because um, his work and performance and his uh, the results are based on what his team does. It's no longer what he does. He was there before. He had full control on over what uh, he delivers and doesn't need anyone else. But now he has to do it through all these people. And in order to do that, he must secure a very smooth, coherent teamwork, etc. So he has a question in his mind, actually several questions. How were they led before I come? I'm not the first leader, definitely. This is my first day. These are my first days with them. But how were they led before? How well were, were they led and how badly were they led? So that some investigation is good about the previous period uh, run by another leader. That is one crucial part a leader must uh, explore. This is fantastic. And what, what I'm also what I was thinking about and what you've now led me into is the leader coming in must listen. Mm-hmm. Rather than just reading out a 10-page document or plan of what he's going to do, he yeah. must listen. And mm-hmm. I'm, can I encapsulate or express what you've just said in a a slightly different way, that I believe the leader could, could, in the early stages of the relationship, the first meeting that they have as a team with their leader, and he doesn't need to say, or she doesn't need to say this straight up front, but to say, I want you to think about leaders that you've worked with in the past, leaders that you've been involved with. You don't need to name them, but I want you to think about them and think about the really good things that you admired in mm. those leaders. Oh, well, uh, he or she did this or they did this or did this. Okay. So if I was to do those sorts of things, how would you feel about that? Oh, really good. Okay, now I want you to think about leaders that you've worked with that you haven't been so comfortable with. What sort of behaviours or things have they done that you haven't been so comfortable with? Well, we had one who never listened to us. Oh, my gosh, you're listening to us now, aren't you? <laughs> who never <laughs> listened to us or who was trying to tell us what to do all the time. Yeah, well, guess what? I'm not going to do any of that. So what he's doing is asking them what they want or don't want from their leader. Now, I think it's it's a it may be seen as a brave question for someone coming into the group to ask those questions, to say what what are the previous people that you've worked with as leaders that have done that have been really good? Tell me those things. Because the leader then says, I'm going to do those because they loved that in the previous leader. So I've got to make sure I do that. What didn't you like with the previous leaders? Don't name them. I'm not going to come chasing them. But give me the sort of things that you didn't, what they didn't like, that you didn't like what that they did. And then the leader thinks, good heavens, I'm going to make a note of those and make sure I don't do those things. Okay? Phoebe. Yeah, Graham, uh, I, I, this was, I was just reflecting some when you were sharing that, you know, one of the, uh, one, one thing which a leader should be more careful in at that point, especially in the new phase in a new place, uh, one is, uh, you, you know, people will be also sensitive to how 
in interacting with that new leader in the workplace. So sometimes it is that, as you always highlight, you know, leadership is a relationship. How can I build that relationship with that member right now, right there? And what kind of modeling am I doing? And that link to the leadership challenge first practice. Am I modeling a way yeah. of building the relationship with my team member? Yeah. Or and and how how are they seeing that? Because you know when when we build that relationship and when that trust process emerges, it creates a more safe space where this may be better for us to do, and this may be better yeah. for the organization to move forward, and that make uh, that that uh, may bring in more comfort for the leader as well as the team to share those, those uh, likes and dislikes in the yeah. leader perspective. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that I thought just just highlight uh, and add that as you were sharing that. I'm going to pick up on the point you made about the relationship being the relationship. It was so important. Some years ago now, someone who um, I was coaching was starting a new role as CHRO for an organisation that had 480 staff. These staff were not all in the same building. They were in different locations. And some of those locations were a couple of hours or so drive away. So they weren't really close. And this person, this woman, said to me, what should I, how can I make a really good impression and a good start as a leader in, what, in this new role? She was new to the company. And here's what I said. Well, there are a couple of things that I said, but one of them related to what Phoebe just said is, I want you to shake hands for 480 people in the next three weeks. I said three weeks because that gives a little bit of time for everybody to be able to meet in this time. It's all very well to say you'll do a town hall and have everybody in the meeting room and, and talk to everybody. But more importantly, I want you to shake 480 hands. Go out and talk to them. Look at them in the eye. Mm -hmm. Get to know them. Start building the relationship. Don't simply send them a, an email saying, I'm pleased to be your new leader at whatever level that, that is, but to get out and look at them in the eye and individually say, what do you think we can do to improve what we're doing? Get this feedback, get, build this relationship. You know, the old idea of my door is always open is one thing, but it's quite often that, that when I hear that, I know that the door may well be open, that the person themselves may not be inside. Um, but what the leader has to do is to reach out and, and make sure that everybody knows that whether there's a, just a team of six people that he or she's leading, or in this case, 480, but to, for them to know that that is the start of the relationship and this, is, this leader will listen to you and wants to know what you've got to say about what you're doing and what in, in, input you can give. I think the word the relationship is always uh, hanging and flying there, but especially in this one, uh, because if you have the relationship, then everything will fall in place. As a trainer, I also have this um, philosophy and approach. I really cannot enter a room in a workshop, and we have all seen that, right? And... Um, and hope that you can immediately get into business, immediately launch the core uh, of the uh, course. We do icebreakers, we do uh, overviews, we reciprocate some, we get personal a bit. And here's the thing, while you were talking, Graham, uh, uh, asking questions is a very critical skill for anyone actually, not only leaders. And the, the key here is that the first question, you'll get an answer which is not the real answer, most, most, more often than not. So it's, it's very simple when we say, how are you? Fine. You know, when you say, how are you? I'm fine. Everybody will say fine, even your closest friend. But, you know, it takes patience and sincerity to actually ask, really? How are you really? You know? I'm, I'm, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. You know, and then you have to ask the third question, but I feel there is more to this just fine. Can you tell me more about that? So this is where people, I mean, your friends will do that because you have a relationship, but uh, asking questions, listening is a skill also that the leader uh, by default should enjoy. 
Yes, but he's able, he or she will get to that level that you've just described as they progressively build the relationship. Mm -hmm. So initially it's going to be, how are you? I'm fine. Of course, that's what it's going to be. But then more, the more the relationship is developed, the more the leader can say, you sure you're okay? <laughs> well, actually, I've got too much work to do. Okay, yeah. let's talk about it. <laughs> so it, but the critical element, as Phoebe has been saying, is the relationship that must be built. Phoebe, how do you feel about this? Yeah, well, I was just uh, reflecting uh, an example where in, in practice, I have seen, you know, a new leader coming to each, each cubicle, sitting with the person, people, having a chat for 10, 15 minutes and, and building, you know, asking questions like, uh, where are you? How, how is your family? Who are all, who all are there? And and knowing the person as a human being first in the process. So I think that that leads to the phrase like uh, as as Muhammad mentioned, connection before content. Whenever where we are entering in, what kind of connection are we building, and how can we build that with a, with a, with another human being in our workplace, in our in our home? So that makes it more impactful. And I think yeah. in, in that process, we are actually trying to build and ha help them understand where we are taking them, what kind of <laughs> the uh, sec second challenge in the leadership, inspiring a shared vision in that process yep. emerges. Yeah. Yep. But when you're saying that, it, it reminds me of the reverse in a sense that I was aware of some years ago, that whenever a new team member, a new person, employee joined this company, and it was a company of about 300 staff or so. Every time a new staff a staff member joined the company, the CEO would go and spend two hours with them at their workstation really soon after they began. So he would make the effort to reach out to them and sit with them and get to know them. But of course, if it's the situation where the leader is new, then the leader should be doing exactly what you just said not only perhaps just to go around and shake the hands of 480 people, but also to go to sit with them in their workspace, to watch what they're doing, to see what's going on, not to watch what they're doing to, to try and correct them or to make fault or whatever, but understand what they are doing uh, and, and developing the relationship, which, which is then uh, added on with empathy with the person and the work that they're doing because he understands what they're doing. So that's really important, as you say, for that leader to go out and, and sit with, with those people. I want to turn it around a little bit more and say what might be going through the mind or should be going through the mind of the new leader. All right. Uh, I, I, would, uh, I want to share. A while ago, I visited the company. They wanted some programs, etc., cetera. And... Um, before uh, I meet the man in charge, the manager, in fact, he was busy with the meeting with uh, another manager. So I had to wait. His uh, team members, two of his team members came, uh, advisors. And I said, OK, we are having the meeting together. They said, no, uh, but the manager is busy and we are happy to be with you, etc." cetera. And uh, they, they posed the question. They said, Mr. Muhammad, you know what's happening in the company? There will be some uh, decentralization, centralization, and we are, uh, uh, as experts and specialists, we will have to report to someone else. What do you think of that? I sensed the fear in their tone because they were comfortable under the current manager, which we are wait whom we are waiting for. And But they conveyed insecurity because they don't know whether the next manager uh, will actually uh, be a good leader or not, or whether they will be able to perform as smoothly as they used to. The, the good part is that when the manager came, they left. And the manager started the conversation by saying, oh, Mr. Muhammad, do you know what's happening in the company? <laughs> there will be so and so and so. And, and he repeated the same issue, but in another tone. He was very optimistic that um. this will help actually better performance. So a shared vision, which uh, just uh, Phoebe said, is very important. The people in that room have concerns. 
and you have concerns also. Uh, you are doing it for the betterment of the company and the people. So why not synchronize both and immediately diffuse all the fears? You have to know that the people in their rooms, in their around the coffee machine, say things and exchange things, and you need to address those things as you start your new mission. Let me pose to you a hypothetical. We have two separate examples here. One is the person who comes into the role and wants to immediately be shown the new processes, the, the existing processes and procedures, and uh, understand how that team is operating, and, uh, and to understand if there's any roadblocks, to understand uh, if, if we are meeting our deadlines, and to understand the costs involved, and how they may, may then sharpen their, their acts to get a better result. The other person in this hypothetical is someone who goes to the team and says, I want to get, I want you to understand who I am. I want, I want to understand who you are. And this person might spend time doing that, getting to know people, getting to know who they are, about getting to know about them and for them to get to know him. Who is going to get the better results? The first person I described or the second one? Mm. That's that's yeah, a good one. That's a good one. Right? If I understand you and you understand me, what what's going to happen if I seek immediately to reach out to you? The concern that was expressed to those two gentlemen while you by those two gentlemen while you were waiting to see the manager, if the new manager reaches out to them and talks to them mm. without knowing what their fears or concerns are. He talks to them and explains what he wants. He gets to know them. Their fears, their concerns, their issues will immediately yes. disappear, won't they? And they will want to perform. But if the, the other person comes in that I described and he wants to know the processes, how things are going on, show me the files and show me this, and give me the report, <laughs> and, and wants to focus on that, there's not going to be a development of a relationship which will then include everybody in moving this team or this department or this organization forward. Simple. Absolutely. Yeah, but it, it, it is interesting when you share that. And quite often, you know, uh, that is where that self awareness piece of being a yeah. leader comes in. Yeah. How I am using that, that space, how I am uh, impacting others around me. And what way it is uh, enabling and what way it is uh, disabling others in their uh, performance. Yeah. Here's, here, look, there's one statement that I, I often use, and it's key to the leadership challenge. And it's, in fact, one of the statements in the LPI, the Leadership Practices Inventory Assessment. The word is not exactly the same that I'm about to use now, but we encourage leaders to say to their team, how does what I do affect your performance? I, uh, managers don't ask that question, right? <laughs> the managers will say, how does what you do affect me? <laughs> <laughs> and I, that then affects you. But if I'm the new leader and I say to my team in the first day or so, you know what? I just want to share something that I used to do with the previous team that I was leading. And I want to let you know that I will be saying this to you too. What I used to say to these guys every little while was, what is it that I'm doing that is affecting your performance? And I will be asking you that question as we move forward. What is it? What am I doing that's affecting mm. your performance? I yeah, want dialogue a... between us that you can say, excuse me, but this is not comfortable for me, what, what's just happened or what you've just done. I want that relationship to exist. Just as I can say to you, Look, I think we need to make some improvements and some changes in the way things may be done. That's a very powerful question, really. I hope many leaders ask this question. In fact, at the beginning of the days also, they everybody is afraid of the status quo. Okay? Yeah. The status quo. We have been doing this for years. 
even my favorite spot in the office is there. I'm now not sure whether the leader also will mess up with everything. What about the norms that we had? What about the way we, we have been doing things? This new leader might shatter everything and bring a new one. And the leaders usually, I mean, not real leaders, they want immediately to create the change and make an impression. And I am the save lifesaver. I am the one who is going to do a lot of things. And that is going to ruin a lot of their morale and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, relationship uh, aspects. I remember my daughter this year, she was very keen on being first day of school after the summer vacation. She wants to be first day without missing. Okay. And the first day, usually not everybody's there. And we were traveling. I said, okay, it's only one day, uh, honey, be with us in this uh, trip. One day will not do anything. You, you will not study in the first day. There is no studying in the first day because there are some administrators. No, I won't travel with you, Dad. I will. I don't want to miss first day of school. Now I'm thinking, really, you are keen about studying. You know, by digging, I came to know that she that she she said to me later on, the first day is the most important day, Dad. Why? I need to secure the best spot in the in the classroom. Everybody in the first day wants to change their places, steal others, and the teacher will come. I need to preserve my previous year's best spot. And this was really wisdom to me. Uh, <laughs> you have to know as a leader, new teacher, newcomer, whatever, people are hanging on to what they were owning before. Don't strip it away from them right from the beginning actually enable them to act as we say in the fourth practice and, and let them keep what's going on and yeah <laughs> let me let me now that you've you've touched on the first in terms of your daughter and and her wanting to be at, at school no daddy i must be at school on the first day <laughs> let me just introduce a, a different element of this and it's called the von restoff effect and this is about the impact of primacy and recency in the way we react or remember things. And it's clearly shown that we remember first. We remember first. We remember the first day at school. We remember the first day at university. We remember the first day we started a job. We remember our first date. We remember these firsts the first time we visited a particular city. We also remember the most recent things that occur. And mm. so the things that happen along the way, that's that's kind of a different thing. We'll talk about that later. But, but the first, you know, we talk about the first impressions and the old line, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm. So when that leader is coming in to meet his new team, the first impression is the one that they're going to remember. Now, clearly, if that new leader says the sort of things that we've been talking about, they're going to leave that room going, wow, that was different. They are going to remember the, the way this leader reached out to them and this, the way this leader wanted to connect with them as individuals rather than a manager who just came into the meeting and talked about what he was going to do and what he expected of everybody. Oh, yes, well, it's the same old, same old, isn't it? But if you've got a leader who in that first meeting makes an impression, it's like the first shaking of the hand when I talked about the 480 people. That is going to be remembered. It's the foundation of the relationship. And so that first is so important. I'm glad you brought this up as a topic for today because the, the importance of remembering that is critical and the example is about your daughter going to school not only does she want to get the the the, the, the seat that, that she sits in every day <laughs> but she will remember the first day absolutely. absolutely we all do that yes yeah so it applies particularly to leaders meeting their team phoebe some wisdom from yeah. you always required <laughs> I, I i'm just uh, thinking you know I think this is important, like 
we 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 are conditioned in different ways and especially yeah. this conditioning aspect the story from from what we experience in our school that happens in our workplace also how can i protect my seat <laughs> how yeah. can i protect my role my territory and you know when a new leader comes the question is uh, and, and the fear emerges whether i will be continuing in that seat whether i will be able to do what i am doing and that is what the leader has to focus and as uh, mohammed mentioned enabling how can as a new leader i can enable them to act in their current role make them make them comfortable make them uh, you know relaxed to interact and then slowly we can definitely challenge the process which they are doing it which 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 is something which has to be also taken care of as a leader but you know am i enabling them to act right now and another aspect is you know uh, the leader also have his own fears how will i be accepted by the team so oh, so sure. absolutely but the, just to round off the point you're making about what he's saying first up in terms of enabling them i really think the one other point that the leader should be making in his first discussion or, or whether it's a discussion or a talk to the people who's going to be leading is to be saying to them and one thing that i want, want you to know and you'll recognize that fairly soon is that when i see something that's done really well you will immediately know when i've seen that you will immediately be told by me that i'm pleased with what you just done because i recognize and appreciate and will talk to people who do really good things we call it what do we call it? Encourage the heart. The fifth practice. Yes. <laughs> and for people to think, oh my gosh, it's his first day and he's telling us he's going to recognize the good things that we do. Wow, I want some of this. <laughs> Gentlemen, one final thought. I think uh, my final thought will be if, uh, if anything you need to take away from this session uh, when you start your first days as leadership is this metaphor. You know, there is a mug and there is coffee, right? The coffee kettle or whatever, right? So you can choose to be either, all right? I encourage you as a leader not to be the coffee kettle and pouring things the moment you arrive to the department. Be the, the mug, be the glass and just receive, receive, receive. And even if nothing comes out of it, the simple act of being a listener and welcomer and embracing and taking things that is enough to create the relationship you need everything will be tasty later don't worry yeah absolutely can we say be the cup um that because some people might take the word be the mug as a little bit of a negative <laughs> <laughs> See, watch out your words also in your first days. Yeah, but even even if the leader says, I don't mind being the mug, I'm here to help. <laughs> baby, baby, your are yeah, uh, wisdom. Uh, so my, my, my uh, request for all leaders listening to us is, you know, uh, be, the mo be the model. Yeah. Model leader you want to be. Imagine yeah. that you are receiving a leader to your in your role and you think about what a leader he or she should be and note it down and be a, a, such a leader who model that way so that you can then connect with your people better connection absolutely. before content absolutely gentlemen i thank you once again for your wisdom and uh we are going to draw this to a close and we will see you all next week. Inshallah, as they say, we certainly will see you next week.